right, good morning everybody. Let's get our psalm books this morning to page number 44. To God be the glory. Page number 44 this morning. Page number 44 this morning. Page number 44. Let's all stand this morning. We'll open in prayer and be dismissed to our classes today. Good to see all of you today and our visitors. Glad that you're here today. Make them feel welcome today, church. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we're so grateful. Lord, we come to give you glory and praise today. As the song said, Lord, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Now, Lord, be in this service today. May you have your way and your will. Be Be with the smallest child today and to the oldest person today. Meet every need here today, we pray. In your name we ask. Amen. You're dismissed to your classes today. everybody out today. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to help us and and defeat us with his word today. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being at church again. Thank you for Sundays, Lord. And Lord, just assemble together and worship the Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father and the Holy Spirit of God. I pray, Lord, today that you help us to rightly divide the word of truth. And I pray, God, that you'll uh, give us grace to apply it to our hearts. Lord, it'll, set, it'll help us not just to be here, Lord, just going through the motion. God, I thank you that you're real. I thank you for your good spirit, Lord, that lives within us, Lord, that are saved. And I I thank you, God, for his dealing and his work in our hearts and our lives. And God, today I pray, as we look at this subject of eternity, Lord, that you'll enable us, Lord, to get our eyes off of all this this old sinking, sick world. Lord, that's going to burn someday, God, and, and just the elements melt with a fervent heat. God, help us to get our eyes on eternity. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to look forward to the coming of Christ and, Lord, the joy that will be ours, Lord, when he comes. 
And Lord, I pray today that you'd help us just even though, Lord, we got to work tomorrow and go about our lives and our business, God, that we'll keep one eye on eternity. God, help us to live in the light of it, I pray in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd help us this morning to love each other with unfeigned love of the brethren. Lord, in pure heart, fervent love before the Lord. God, help us care one for another as you told us in your word. God, I pray that your spirit would just be preeminent and prominent in this place today, lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. God, help folks to get their eyes on Jesus today. God, help us to focus on your word. Lord, I pray above everything, help us to give you the praise and the glory and the worship and the honor that's due your holy name. God, I pray that you'll bind the devil from his line today. Lord, let there be a good liberty in this place today. Lord, you said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God, you said that we'd know the truth and the truth would make us free. God, we thank you for the glorious freedom that's in Jesus Christ. God, I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Lord, reaching down, God, and I don't even understand, Lord, why your good spirit brought me under conviction of sin. And Lord, I, I just thank you, God, that you dealt with me. And I, I think about that, Lord, uh, so many years ago. But God, the same good spirit that met me that night hadn't changed a bit. And I pray, God, today, do what only you can do. And I pray, Lord, if this folks is lost and they'd go to hell right now, God, if they died. or you, Lord, I, I just pray that you'd help them wake up. Do only what the Holy Ghost can do. Shake them down inside, God. Lord, you said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God, help us to have a healthy fear of you, Lord, knowing, God, that, Lord, our breath is in your hand. Lord, you said not to fear them which can kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast both soul and body in hell. So, Lord, help us get our priorities straight. And then, Lord, I pray, fill us with the Spirit of God. Fill us with the joy of the Lord. God, I pray, fill us with the love of God and make it shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And God, put a Holy Ghost enthusiasm in our souls, Lord Jesus. And may we be as Paul, sorrowing yet rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray, glorify yourself. Amen. All right, uh, we left off last week. And guys, do you happen to still have that list by any chance from last week? If you do, that'd be good. We went through a lot of verses, and I'm not going to repeat those. But we talked about the fact that each one of us are going to be in eternity. And, uh, you know, we're not here forever. Amen. Amen. We're just passing through. And, uh, man, alive another year's almost. How many things this year went by fast? Boy, I mean, tell you, it rolls, doesn't it? I can't. I don't know what in the world is going on. Me and Dean was talking. It's kind of like a low jet. Boy, just, you know, next thing you know, it's another year. And you and I will be in eternity for very long. And I hope and pray that you're all saved because that's a wonderful thing. If you're saved, if you're not saved, you're in trouble, big trouble. And I'm telling you something, hell is not a joke. The lake of fire is not a joke. And uh, you need to be saved if you're not saved. And I tell you, I, I don't know. Boy, I've been, I want to thank all the men that prayed this morning, that came and prayed when you came. And, I, and you say, if you, I don't care where you prayed. I don't care if you prayed in your truck, your car, or milk barn, or wherever you is at. But I tell you what, prayer will get the job done. So let's take up, we're at Acts 13, 48, guys, down there a ways. We're looking at the subject of eternity. Uh, there's only two places you're going to spend eternity. And that's heaven or the lake of fire. You'll either be with a new heaven and new earth, or you'll be in the lake of fire. And I'll tell you what, God's going to fix this old sin-cursed world. And uh, look here, when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life, believed. And look at that next verse 49. The word of the Lord published that. All that. That's, that's the verse that God used to get me about mail outs and stuff. But down through the last 40 years, we've done all kinds of mail outs. And we're getting ready to do another mail out. We're going to do another mail out hopefully before spring gets here. Try to reach everybody in our area with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Publish it. And all. look at that. The word of the Lord is published out all the region. And when I think about that, I think about Norwood, Mountain Grove, Mansfield, Hartville, Ava, Van Zant, and... And uh, 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 Cold Springs, how many knows where Cold Springs is at? And Denlo, and, and uh, how many knows where Tick Ridge is? You know where Tick is. Very few people know where Tick Ridge is. But in T and Tick Ridge, there's, there's gold bars that was buried on that ridge, and they've never found them. Anybody want to know where the ridge is at? <laughs> 
The reason they never found them because that's a big lie. <laughs> Tick Ridge is where I was raised at. If you go back on an old Douglas County map, and they've got all these old places on there, and right, right up, actually, it's right up the road, Danny, isn't it kind of, Danny? It's right up the road, kind of on the old Filer area, and it literally says Tick Ridge. How'd you like to advertise that when you sell your place? <laughs> tick, tick Ridge. <laughs> Buy this 20 acres, Tick Ridge. <laughs> Oh, man, that's bad. All right, Acts 30. Let's go down to Romans chapter 1, verse number 20. Romans uh, 1, verse number 20. Watch this. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his, look at this, eternal power and Godhead. I want you to know something about God. He's eternal. He never gets weak. He never gets tired. He has eternal power. And I'm glad. Underneath are the everlasting arms. God's eternal. We'll get a hold of that. You know, you and I live in a time that's just hard to grasp, but I'm glad I got a God that has eternal power. You reckon verse 20 is taught in our schools? The invisible things of Him from the creation of the world? You reckon that's taught in first grade, second grade, kindergarten? Oh, somebody jump up and have give birth to a rabbit. Read that. And they'd be so upset. Aren't you, aren't you? Anyway, I'm going to get off that. <laughs> Romans 2 7. Romans 2 7. I tell you, it's good to know you've got a creator. It's good to know you're a creation. You're not God. I'm not God. And it's good to know. Hey, how's that new baby? Good. good? Mama doing good? Amen. Well, I'm glad everything went well. It's, I, I'm telling you, I'm glad. Been thinking about you. To them who by patient continuing and well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality. Eternal life. What's immortality, somebody? That's what you'll, yeah, you won't die. That's what you'll have in your new glorified body. You'll be immortal. You won't die. By the way, if you have eternal life, you can't die. You just move out. Amen? Have eternal life. If you have the life of Christ. I tell you what, that's the most exciting thing in the world. Boy, I tell you what, I just felt a good surge of Holy Ghost enthusiasm come over my soul. Where the soul never dies. Amen. And eternal life. All right. Uh, let's go to Romans 5, 21. We're just looking at verses in the Bible about eternity, eternal, eternal life. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life. Well, I'm glad grace reigns. Amen. I'm glad grace reigns unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, uh, this church doesn't offer you religion. This church offers you the eternal life of Jesus Christ. And uh, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And when you get saved, you get biblically saved, when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, He gives you eternal life. And we talked about that last week. Man, you, that's the, it is the gift. It's a gift, amen. All right. So let's look at uh, Romans 6.23. And a lot of people know this in here. I hope you know this verse. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There ain't no other way to get it. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And again, I would write all these verses down. Uh, you can't sleep some night very well. Just get up and get your notes out and just start reading all these verses and get happy in the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Oh, man alive, this is good. For our light affliction. Who wrote this? As far as God using a man, right? Who wrote it? Paul. <laughs> if I had his affliction, I would have never said that. <laughs> I would have said, that's heavy affliction. It's heavy affliction. Can't hardly stand it. For our light affliction, I had a guy this morning call me, and uh, he texted me first and asked for prayer. And he's just down. He's a preacher. He's just discouraged and depressed and so forth. You know, I said I, he wanted me to pray. I said, "Call me right now. We'll pray together." But you know, your affliction is your affliction. Somebody else has something. You know, it's hard to relate to them. But what you're going through, you're going through. But I want to say something. Be honest with you. It's light. 
you and I have, you, we, at this point, now there's a guy coming out in Hollywood. This, in fact, many of you probably watched his stupid shows over the years. I, I've seen it two or three times. I, I didn't like it the first time I ever seen it. But um, he's one of these Hollywood producers. And he's putting out a documentary, I guess, this week against Christianity. And they're going to promote this thing all over the United States, why Christianity is a, a detriment to democracy, which we're not, and a detriment to the United States of America. That's where we're at. You and I have not been thrown to the lions. We have not been burned at the stake. But it could happen. And um, right now there's a, you know, there's lawsuits. I mean, they're suing people for expressing their Christian faith. And uh, your colleges, by and large, have already em embraced this thing that they're, they consider the gospel and tell anyone that they're a sinner that hate speech. And you're just moving pretty accelerated pretty fast. So things could get a lot worse than they are. But uh, in my life, this has been a light affliction. We tend to think if somebody said something, oh, it just ruined our whole day. Bless our little hearts. We tend to think if somebody opposed us somehow or another or whatever it might be. We tend to think we've been through something. But we don't know anything. Karen was saying to me this morning when we was getting ready for church. You know, and she said, honey, we just, you know, we don't comprehend that. How, we, we tend to think we live in a bad time. Yeah, we do. But I'm going to tell you, it's bad for Noah's day. So bad God destroyed this world. It's bad in the days. Lot, lot, there have been a lot, a lot of bad times in history. The truth about her and I, she was born in 58. I was born in 53. We grew up in probably one of the most blessed times in world history, and especially in American history, where... You know, we was talking about the fact we didn't even know about issues of sin. We didn't even aware of them as as kids that people are just out in the open talking about now. I wasn't even aware of a lot of stuff. And, you know, I just raised out here in the country and, and, and kind of sad in a way, but I just kind of raised to think everybody's a nice person, everybody's nice people. They might do something a little stupid once in a while, but they, and that ain't true. And man is wicked. He's a sinner. And, uh, and, and But anyway... He said, this light affliction, which is but for a moment. Boy, time and life is but a moment in comparison to eternity. And uh, it, But he said this, your light affliction worketh for us. If I had you had underlined that in your Bible, afflictions work for us. What does affliction do for you? It humbles you. Builds character. Builds your faith. Uh, I tell you what, affliction do a lot of good things for you. It's, it'll, so, it'll sober you up. Amen. Sober you up. And uh, make life get real to you. Yes, Brother Don. I think it gives you a springboard. When all the stuff's going on around you everywhere, it can give you the lead that you need to springboard into the gospel on that. Just Amen. because of the desperate times that we live in. One of the things that affliction does is, is it does help you become eternally minded. You know, and a lot of things do that. It's, you know, when you're young, I don't know. It, to me, there's kind of a uh, what I would call the deception of youth. You know, you just you just think you're going to live forever, and you just really don't think that you know. And you got all this time, and you don't. And uh, it, it goes by quick and fast, and you lose it if you're not careful. I heard you talking about what can relationship to what you said. I heard a man say this week that. He said, when people throw rocks at you, he said, just use them to keep climbing up. We'll stack them and climb, climb with them. I thought that was pretty good. But, what, but it worketh for us a far more exceeding, look at that, far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Eternal weight. Well, if you weigh stuff up, how does it weigh up for eternity? If I have... Land. How's that way for eternity? Ma'am, I can't take any of it with me. If I have, you know, money, am I going to take any of it with me? That's why Jesus said, lay your treasures up in heaven. You know, that's where the, that's where the weight, that, that's where, it, what he's talking about here is what matters. What has real true substance? What really counts? And uh, and he said affliction, will, it, it does it. And here's how, watch this. Glimpsing into eternity. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. I can't see into eternity except through this book. If I don't look at eternity through this book, I'm left to my own imagination. And that's dangerous. 
always look into eternity through the Bible. <clears throat> it's the only way you have of seeing into eternity. And the Bible will give you glimpses and, and a view of eternity. While we look not at the things which are seen. And now here's what he's saying. How could he say that the affliction is light? Because when he weighed up yeah. what was going on, yeah. Yeah. he said, man, this isn't anything compared to eternity. Yeah. And we are, as a saved person, you know, you, you are rewarded as to, uh, you, you know, the Bible talks about suffering with Christ, affliction you know, with Christ, and so forth. <clears throat> and if you be proposed for Christ, happy are ye. And uh, there are rewards and so forth. But when you weigh things up in the, in the weight of eternity, that's what God wants you to do. Well, how's this weigh up for eternity? Does it count? A lot of things that people go crazy over. I, I, I watched a little deal last night come across my feed of um, Larry Bird. How many knows who Larry Bird is? A lot of people do. Larry Bird played basketball for the Boston Celtics and probably one of the most fantastic ball players that ever put a pair of tennis shoes on. And, went, when, and they had this montage of all his playing through the years, and then they had this deal where the night he played his last game. And it's pretty sad because you know what he said? He said, I gave my life to basketball, and basketball's been good to me. I lived for basketball. And he walked off. And, you know, and that's fine, play basketball. But what's. How's that way up compared to eternity? You know, not one word about how God had given me the air to breathe. God had give, not one word about God gave me the skills that I have. Not one word about the goodness of God. Not one word about eternity. It's all about now. And that's why you have all these young people, you know, wanting, they look at these sports stars and music stars and they just get, and, and so they just, they, they don't see the weight of eternity and just, and not just young people, but uh, all of us and just get into that thing. For the things which are seen are temporal. Everything you can see is temporal. This body here is even temporal. And, uh, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. So how do you see into eternity? Through the word of God. The uh, Bible said that, watch this, that Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. You say, how, how am I going to endure the afflictions? How am I going to endure? I mean, what if you decide today, uh, just whoever, what if you decide today that you're really going to live for God? And there's just going to be some major changes in your life and, and no, you no longer, you know, are you... How are you going to weigh up a little bit of scoffing and rejection from people for, for eternal? If you truly took a stand for God, how's that weigh up? You know, you take a little bit of laugh and scoffing and rejection from the world and they think you're... I'm, I have, I'm, I'm drifting right now into my message. I'm going to stop. Okay. All right, let's go to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.1. Watch this here. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle right here. That's amazing. We have a handout today. You're, how, how many like studied the, studied the tabernacle that we've, we've studied here several times? Tabernacle. I'd still like to build a, a model of the tabernacle. But that tabernacle is a picture of the true tabernacle in heaven. You're going to get a handout today that on the back of that handout is a drawing of the true tabernacle in heaven and the tabernacle in the wilderness and this tabernacle. Your body is a tabernacle. has three sections to it. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. And for we know that this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. It is going back to the dust. We have a building of God. And house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Jesus said, I'll go away to prepare a place for you. And, uh, you know, there, I don't want to get dived off into this, but there's people who think he's relating to, you know, a new body. I, I don't really go along with that in, in that context there. Uh, I know we're going to have a new body, but I literally think he's building us a place to stay. <laughs> That's what I think. But anyway, 
don't we'll argue about that. But in for in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is in heaven. How many's ever known anybody like that? How many's ever been around somebody that says, I don't know why God just didn't take me? Danny, your mother would say that. I don't know why God just doesn't take me. She was ready. She desired to put off this building and to put on new bo- the new body. And you can you'll, you you will if you live long enough, you'll get to the place where you're you're ready. This time, and that, that, I'm gonna get on the plane. That plane's right ready to leave. And you'll get that way. And by the way, I. I'm going to give you this. Live till you die, though. Don't don't. Li- We're not talking about being morbid and sitting in your house waiting on eternity. We're not talking about that. We're talking about living life in its fullest, living life for Christ, but living in the light that this this life in the light of eternity, so that your eternal situation is better. All right, <clears throat> let's go then to uh, Ephesians 3:11, according to the eternal purpose which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal purpose. Does your life have an eternal purpose? Jesus Christ, God, has an eternal purpose. Can I say to you, it's going to be done. What he purposes will happen. According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. What was Christ's purpose? Uh, that he, what was purposed in him? That he would be born of a virgin? That he would uh, become a man? That he would be able to identify with you being tempted in all points like as we are? That he would live a sinless life. That he would die as a substitute and a sacrifice in our place. That he would be crucified and shed his blood. That was, that was his purpose. And to be honest with you, what's, you know, I would ask you this day. What is your purpose for living? What is your purpose for living? This may not be a big deal to you, but it is to me. Yesterday I was I was working, and you know how you'll just think and pray and think and pray and have to your mind will go off in the ditch and you got to bring it out of the ditch, you know. <laughs> and, and I was going to be honest with you, if if I didn't have God as a purpose for my life, I'd probably be the most miserable person you ever met in your life. Apart from Christ, to me, there's just no real reason for existence. I mean, what to eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. Party, go to the ball game, have a party, uh, accumulate wealth. I mean, you know, don't you, I think that's fine. I, I, I think we should enjoy life. I'm not saying, you know, uh, uh, Jerry. I think God have. I think it's nice to have a good horse and a nice saddle. Amen. I think God. I think there's nothing wrong with getting on the four wheeler and going out there enjoying what God's given to do. You know, and, and I'm not against having things. But all those things have to be in an eternal purpose. And if we don't have an eternal purpose, my goodness, what are we doing here? There's an old song, uh, uh, primitive, sing it so good. Must I go in empty handed? Must I meet my Savior so? The song is about, I'm going into eternity. Am I going to meet God and not bring anybody with me? I'm not going to bring one soul with me to, that I reach for God's sake. Yeah. And it brings into focus what was my purpose for my existence. And uh, so I, I encourage you, you know, just, just find out God's purpose in your life and hit it and go with it. And it'll get sweeter as the days goes by. I mean, I'm honest with you. Duh. That's a bad statement. But when I say that, usually I've got something going on back. It's, it's, it's two or three layers back in my thinking. You know what? You know what I told God this week? I was really down for just a little while. Anybody besides me get down every once in a while? I've been up. I'm happy. I'm good. But I just got kind of low. Got to running things through my mind. You know what I said, John? See, God, I wouldn't want none of my boys to ever be a preacher. I wouldn't want them to have to go through the garbage I went through in the last 41 years. I had to get straightened up. This light affliction. I ain't been through nothing. Most of it's imaginary anyway. <laughs> Don't mount anything. I mean, didn't they spit on Jesus? 
I don't think I've ever been spit on yet, Brett. I don't want to be either. I'm afraid my flesh would come out. You know, I've never been whipped to my back. I've never had a crown of thorns put on my head. Nails in my hands. I, I, I never had that. But you have a tendency, the flesh, you know, you know the flesh likes to have a pity party. The flesh likes to feel sorry for itself, you know, you know. Uh, but there's just not, but I had to straighten up and say, you know what? I'm thankful God called me to preach. I'm glad God saved me. Amen. And uh, but to be honest with you, the, I mean, the devil will attack you and just say, you know what? He'll bring out all the things that because I, I told Karen this. I told her, I said, you know what? If I hadn't surrendered to preach, everything might be rosy. Might have all of our family together. Might have all the friends I've lost together. Might you know? I you know. Uh, Maybe I could have done a lot better material. I don't know. I mean, you get to thinking about, you know, you think, well, it seemed me like, a, you know, answering a call to preach and living for the life of eternity. Just, you know, just I, I could start from that end of this property and go to the highway with people that used to be my friend that are not. And it's all over preaching. It's all over standing on what the Bible says. And you think, my land. You know, but you have to get up out of there. You have to get cast casting down imaginations. Cast get them lies. Don't give place to the devil. Because I'll be honest with you. And can I tell you the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I have more purpose in life than the President of the United States. Amen. Serving Jesus Christ is the greatest purpose a man can have. Amen. Now we're talking about eternity. We're talking about eternity. And it's coming quick. Coming on, yes. 312 says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. Wherefore I desire that you faint not Amen. at my tribulation Amen. for you, which is your glory. Amen. That says it all. I just want to encourage all of us tonight to have an eternal purpose in our life. And by the way, that means you can, you know, you, 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 you don't have to have, be a preacher to have eternal purpose. Amen. You can be a mother and have eternal purpose. You can be a daddy and have eternal purpose, and you can have a uh, you can have a, a, a car shop. You can be a mailman. You can you can be a, a what do you call it, a sheetrock putter upper. <laughs> That's good English, ain't it? I'll get you now. Get Jim. go ahead, Jim. Think not that I am come to some peace on earth. I came not to Amen. some peace, but a sword. Yeah. Karen and I we were talking. You know, and it just comes up and it says, you know, I didn't, for, for several years, I didn't take seriously when God says a man's foes should be they of his own household. I didn't take that seriously. I didn't take seriously that if you, you know, hate your, you know, if you don't separate all your relationships, relationships cannot be my disciple. I mean, those, those passages of scripture just kind of read on past them. That's what it says. He didn't kind of, be dean. I'm amazed that my affliction, what little it is, isn't much worse. It should be much worse. I deserve worse for yeah. my sin. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm God has been merciful to me. <laughs> uh, let me say, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Somebody had a hand up. Yes, Don. I think about what you said about getting down, getting low. And had I not jumped in called the preacher, had I not been saved as a Christian... Boy, things could have been different. Everybody in this church has got their own battles that they're fighting. Yeah. We're fighting them with Jesus Christ. This yeah. world that circles us all the time with their parties and their hee-haws, mm -hmm. they're miserable beyond belief. That's right. Yeah. And we fight these battles with Christ as our Savior with the hope of glory. But the people out there in the world, they're headed for hell. Yeah. And they, they're living it now. And we may look to crack them for a second. But it's a light affliction. I I just want to encourage all of us today, and I, I, I we're just reading the Bible, but I just want to encourage you to get to live in the light of eternity. That's what this lesson is all about. It's learning to, to honestly and sincerely live in the light of eternity. And by the way, that will help this temporal life. Yes, amen. Living the light of eternity will make this life more. And we need purpose. Yes. We need a purpose to live. And uh, I just be truthful with you. A lot of depression that's out here. Sadness, uh, just down and out. They don't know why they're here. 
They don't know what it's about. I, I, I go. I, I mean, a lot of dads are in depression. I go work. I, I, a man told me on the phone here not too long ago. I asked him how he's doing. He said, I go to work, come home, I go to work, I come home, I go to work, I come home, I go to work, I come home. That's my life. And that's pretty sad. And, uh, now, you know, I, I just want you all to I, please take what I said, with a, you know, just take it lightly because... I get down and can get discouraged like anybody. But God, you know, I always say it's not a crime to get down. It's a crime to stay down. When you, you don't have to stay down. You can get in your Bible. You can pray. You can seek the Lord. And you start singing hymns to yourself and say, Reggie, that's a lie out of hell. And let's get down the road and be happy. And I tell you, I enjoy working. I, I, we get up. We start work at 630 every morning, which, man, life. You know, I have to get up at 5, 530 to do that. I'll tell you what, that's terrible on me. But anyway... I, we're, but we're out there in the open, and I watch geese fly by, watch the clouds come across. Every once in a while, be a deer jump out. You know, I'm just sitting there going, "How lucky can, how blessed can I be to be able?" And by the way, at 70 years old, be able to get out and do something. Amen. And I just, I'll be honest with you, when I get to where I can't do anything, y'all better pray for me because I'm probably going to be a mean old nasty nursing home man. Now, I mean, I've got a friend I work with. He's 71 and I'm 70. And we've made a pact that if anybody puts either one of us in a nursing home, we're going to come and rescue the other one and take him out of there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he says, now, Reggie, they, they put me in a nursing home and said, you come get me. I slipped in and get me and said, if you have to hold a pistol to all of them, get me out the door. <laughs> and, <they're joking. laughs> and he said, if you put you in a nursing home, I'll come and get you. So anyway. But eternal purpose. I just hope, Dave, that you'll just brighten up and say, Lord, I came to church this morning. I'm not going to leave like I came. I'm going to have eternal purpose. And I walk out. It's going to be for Jesus Christ's sake because that's the only eternal purpose there is. I'm going to live for God. Amen. Whether anybody likes it or not. Yes. I was just the other night telling my family, just shouting praises to God because I was talking to a Mormon and God was destroying him. <laughs> and the Bible says in Romans 8.31, if God be for us, who can be against Amen. us? And we can talk about all the fun the world's having, but there's no joy on Amen. earth like right. watching God Amen, the Holy brother. Ghost right. move Amen. through an unworthy, ungodly, right. hell-deserving sinner and use yep. him for Amen. eternal purpose. Amen. And so I just give glory to God for it. And so we've got we have got the life. Amen. We've Amen. got it all. That's we've true. everything. That's what ticks me off about, uh, I wish that I could run more steady. You know, I'm kind of like a yo-yo. I'm a yo-yo Christian. Up and down, up and down. I wish I was more steady. My wife, she just like that. Makes me so mad. I wish she'd blow up or do something, you know. <laughs> Brother Carr, I'm the only one that ever blows up and gets out of sorts. She never has to say I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that right? Any other guys like that? But, you know, but it, but it humbles me. I'm just glad for the grace of God. I'm going to, you know, I am what I am by the grace of God. All right, let's keep, keep trucking here. Uh, 1 Timothy 1, 17. 1 Timothy 1, 17. Now unto the king, what? Eternal. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The king, eternal. we have an eternal king. Boy, I tell you what, the old kings down through the years, they've all died and died and this and died and that and died and they all go to tombstone. But our king will never be a tombstone for our king. He's eternal. Amen. 612, 1 Timothy 612. We've got a truck and go here. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Lay hold on eternal life. Uh, 619, 1 Timothy 619. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. And I'll tell you what, need to do that. 2 Timothy 210. Therefore, I endure all things. Whoop, there it is. For the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with what? Eternal glory. Eternal glory. All right, Titus 1 2. We're just going to keep trucking here. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie did what? Promise, Promise before the world. Began. What a pa 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 powerful package of verse this is of promises. Now, hope is what? Hope is not wishing. Hope is knowing that and lay and and acting upon that knowing that what God promised to do, He will do. That's hope. 
The world redefines everything yeah. to their own purposes. The world would have you, and some religions would have you thinking that means you just kind of wish and hope it turns out good. That is not so. Hope and hope, Bible hope is knowing that what God said He would do, He'd do. If God said He'd forgive you, He'll do what? Forgive. If God said He'd save you, He'd do what? He save you. If God said He'd give you eternal life, He'd do what? He give. You. God does not mess around. God didn't play mind games with nobody. He cannot lie, and He promised before the world began. All right, let's go. Keep trucking here to uh, Titus three seven. That being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Hebrews 5, 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of what? Eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Did you know there's a matching verse on that? To them that obey the gospel. Somebody says, I'm going to tell you something. Obedience is part of Christianity, like or to lump it. God says to repent, you need to obey that. God says to believe, you need to obey that. If you don't obey that, you're not going to get saved. It's just that 6-2, Hebrews 6-2 of the doctrine of baptism, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. He's talking to them. He's talking about these different things the Bible teaches. And he says of eternal judgment. And there is an eternal judgment in the sense that judgments are eternal. They're, we're not just, it's just not now. It's going to be an eternity. There's an eternal judgment. All right, let's go to the next one there. Uh, Hebrews 9-12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. That's that heavenly tabernacle. Having obtained what? what? Eternal redemption. He's the author of eternal salvation. It's, it's, the redemption is eternal. All right. Uh, verse, uh, I think we get verse number 14 there. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Look at this. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Eternal inheritance. I'm thankful for the Bible's teaching on eternity. First Peter 5.10. The God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, watch this. After that, you have suffered a while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Going to have to go through some sufferings. Going to have to go through some unpleasant things. But he's called us unto his eternal glory. 1 John 1, 2. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life. Which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. How many would get the idea that God has... is that the concept of eternity is very thick in the Bible. I mean, we're, we're, we're not, we've, we've covered a lot last week. There's a, a John, 1 John 2.25. This is the promise that he promised us even eternal life. Well, I'll tell you what, it's the best news we're ever going to hear. Three five, or three fifteen. I'm sorry, three fifteen. Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. First John five eleven. Everybody, everybody get everybody get your radar up now. Watch this. This this set of verses here changed my life. This set of verses right here changed my life, totally changed my life. I've told you before that I was raised in, in pretty, uh, very strong lose your salvation doctrine. And God, this is the verse that God used to change me. He moved me from how good I was living, hoping to get to heaven by how good I was living, to understanding the gospel is free and it's a gift. It's what Jesus did, not what I'm doing. And it totally changed my life. Uh, literally, uh, I, I can show you. Pretty, but anyway, watch, watch this. This is the record that God has given to us, eternal life. And this life is in what? It's not in how good you're living. It's not in, in your rituals and all this stuff. 
There's only one place you'll find eternal life, and that's in His Son. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to preach that till I go home. It's in Christ. Christ alone. Here it is. This is the record. You know, Karen and I, there should be over at Hartville somewhere a record that we got married. There should be a record over at Hartville somewhere in the recorder's office. We have recorder's offices that own a piece of ground. And we have these records, and we put, we put legal power to those records. God said this is his record. God's given you a record. It's recorded. It's a record. And it's legally foundationed in the fact that justice was satisfied by the, by the offering of Jesus. Now watch verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life. Not he that was dunked in water. Amen. Not he that was catechized. Amen. Not he that was sprinkled. Yeah. He that hath the Son. And I just want to ask you this question this morning. Do you have Jesus Christ? Is he your Savior? Have you believed upon him, received him as your Savior? He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. This is the pivot swing of eternity for you right here. You either have Jesus Christ or you don't. And every, your eternal destiny hinges right there. Look what he goes ahead and says. These things have I written unto you that believe. It didn't say that does the best he can. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That ye may what? No. That ye what? No. If we was in English class, what would the word have be? Possession. Present tense possession. Amen. Not going to have, but have. Amen. You get saved now, not on the other side of the grave. Right. Not on the other side of the grave. You get saved now. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God that verse changed my life first of all I didn't know you could know that you were saved I didn't know that you could know that you were going to heaven that you had eternal life I just kind of always thought that I'd find out when I died I guess you talk about a miserable wreck that's a miserable condition to live in God doesn't want you he gave you he, he wrote it written, these things are written that you may know and the way you can know this one is had there been a time in your life when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, not just believed about him that he existed, but you believed on his death, his burial and his resurrection, dying in your place as your substitute paying for your sin have you believed on that gospel message that he died in your place and paid for your sins and was raised from the dead that's the gospel that's what it means when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ believing that's how God saves you he saves you on the basis of another's work he doesn't save you on the basis of how good you live and to me this was a big thing because I just I mean I would have died and went to hell trying to do the best I could that's what religion will do for you do to you Okay, let's go to the next one, guys. First John, uh, verse number 20. Let's go to verse 20 and see what's there in verse number 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Jude, verse number 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, that was looking at the subject of eternity now, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, folks, I want to tell you, this deal, this deal going on in America is not some little light thing. It brings the wrath of God on a nation. I'm telling you. 
This, this country is turned into a Sodom and Gomorrah land. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's just like a flood of fire burning through this country. And um, God says that Sodom and Gomorrah, and you all know what happened in Genesis 19 there. He burnt that place out, fire and brimstone. And God says, God says that that set forth for us. That's why your forefathers encoded law in this nation against sodomy and against perversion. Because they believe the Bible. Don't buy into this stuff. They're rewriting history on America. Just take, I mean, all this stuff. But American people were, by and large, not everybody, but by and large, were a Bible-reading people. And if you don't think that, go take a trip to Washington, D.C. or Jefferson City and look up on the buildings, the verses that they carved in granite. Why did they put those verses up on buildings on the Washington Mall and all Supreme Court and all them buildings up there versus in granite. Why did they do that? You know why? Because they knew we'd have a tendency to forget God's word. They knew history. That nations forget how they were founded. And they put that up there. Uh, in the rotunda up here at the Capitol. Jefferson City. You walk, that's, mean they, that's, that's where you walk in. That's the, like the first place you go into. Righteousness that exalteth the nation. In marble granite there. They want us to know. But I want to tell you something about eternal fire. There ain't no way you can comprehend being going to hell. Oh, God help us to wake up. You aware? All right. Yes. We say sometimes, I've used it before, when you're saying something that you mean it's rock solid. So that's carved in stone. Carved in stone, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah. mean it. It's important. Yeah. Verse 21 in Jude. Keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Jude is a book about apostasy. And it's about making sure that you know what that you that you're saved. Verse 25. To the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion, and power both now and ever. Ever. The word ever. Amen. All right, Revelation. We've got several in the book of Revelation. Revelation 1, 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ever and ever. Revelation 4, 9. When those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. And one of the greatest concepts about God you can get is that God is eternal. There never was a beginning, never was an end. He's eternal. And uh, there's so much in, in, involved in that being eternal. Verse uh, chapter 10, verse number, what is that, guys? 10 on there, I believe. <clears throat> Four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. Liveth forever and ever. Uh, 5.13. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under earth and such are in the sea and all that are in them heard I say, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. The four beasts said, Amen. The four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. That's what's going on in heaven. <clears throat> We're afraid to raise our hand. We're afraid to get on our knees. Good grief. Um, <clears throat> let's go to, again there, let's go to 7.12. Saying, Amen, blessing and honor and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Uh, see how God's putting this just continuously pushing this forward forever and ever forever and ever eternal 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 uh, Ten six. <clears throat> swear by him that liveth forever and ever by the way this is interesting look at here who created heaven the things that therein are and the earth and all that there is and the sea and the things that therein that there should be time no longer you're going to be time when time's done time's out <laughs> time's over and what we'll all be into eternity. Time will be nowhere. We're living in time right now, but we'll be into eternity. All right, let's go with the next one there. <clears throat> Eleven fifteen, I think it is. And seven things are sounding with great voice heaven. And the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and shall reign forever and ever. 
Amen. Uh, by the way, just look at that. 420 elders, sit upon the, fall upon the faces and worship God. Give thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Look at verse number 18. Nations are angry, mad at God. 1411. <clears throat> now listen, this verse right here is a, ought to make you put some fear of God in you. Smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. These are people, who, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I want you to think about that. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. It's unbelievable. You can't wrap your brain around that hardly. The rich man died and in hell he lifted up his eyes. The rich man was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Being in torments. Somebody says, I'll be honest with you, if I didn't believe there was a hell like that, I, would, I wouldn't even preach. I wouldn't even profess Christianity. It wouldn't be nothing to be saved from. But, you know, these are sobering thoughts, but we, we say we come to Bible, we come to church and want to read our Bibles. Just think on that thought for about 15 seconds. Just think of that thought about a place where the torment never ends. The smoke of their torment they send up and have no rest day or night. People, don't, they don't like that stuff. Boy. But the world, this world does not want to hear that. They don't want a God's got power throwing them in hell forever. They don't even want to imagine a God. But see, one... It, I get hit now on my Facebook stuff that a lot of times message stuff people were saying, I wouldn't serve a God that would throw people in hell. Why does God send people to hell? Why is there a hell? Why is there a lake of fire where it says, whosoever name is not found written there and cast into the lake of fire forever and ever? Why, 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 do, why did God send people there? God is holy. That's the greatest thing you'll ever know about God. God's greatest attribute is not his love. God's greatest attribute is his holiness. And without his holiness, it, the, any love he has would not mount to anything. And because he's holy, he's just. And ju sin requires justice. Justice has to be satisfied. If somebody raped, you had an 11-year-old girl and somebody raped her, strangled her, and throwed her in a ditch... And you find the, the find the guilty party, bring him before the judge. And the judge says, "I know, listen, dude, don't be doing that anymore. Now, if I catch you doing that again, we're going to throw you in jail. But you going out there and you stop that. You're sitting there in the courtroom. What would you do? What would you do? I say the very least you would do is stand up and say this courtroom is a facade. You're not a just judge. And what we don't realize is that the holiness of God and what sin is in the, in the sight of Almighty God. Wages of sin is death. He told Adam and Eve, the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And uh, we don't understand. We, but God is just. The wonderful part about it is that he's made a way for our sins to be forgiven freely. He gave his son to die in our place for our sin. And it's free. We don't have to work for it. We just have to receive and accept it. What else could he do for us? But his justice has to be satisfied or none of us could be saved. Amen. You and I could not be saved if his justice was not satisfied. And God's justice has to be satisfied. And it is satisfied through his love. Amen. For God so loved the world. God committed his love toward us. And then while we yet sin as Christ died for us. God's a holy God. His justice required death. He gave his son to die in our place. What called payment of sin. You and I couldn't even pay for our sin. You could die. You can die. You could you and I could die on a cross, wouldn't pay a dime's worth of our sin. You could pound a rock with a pick for the rest of your life, and you'll never pay for one sin. The only thing to ever pay for our sin is Jesus Christ's blood. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us. That's the gospel. Okay, it's, we're getting close on time here. Uh, we're going to finish out Revelation, and next week we'll finish out the uh, the verses on everlasting. We've probably got about another 30-some, 40-some verses on that. 
uh, Revelation 15, 7. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. What's God wants you to know? He's eternal. Re 19, 3. And the voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that hear from both moment great. I must not have the right reference on that. But um, anyway, let's go to 20, verse number 10. This here is at the great white throne judgment. Uh, the devil, uh, just before, the devil that deceived them was not, it's before the great white throne judgment preceding it. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. That, that happened back in chapter 19. 18 and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever that's where the devil's headed to he ain't always going to be aggravating you and uh, so then we'll finish up with 22 verse number 5 and there shall be no night there he's talking about this new heaven new earth they need no candle the city of God the new Jerusalem neither the light of the sun for the Lord God giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever not always going to be this world. That's why he wants us to set our affections on things that are eternal and not on things that's temporal. And let me just tell you this. <clears throat> the world does not like teaching on eternity. Right. A lot of churches don't like teaching on eternity because they want the, the ministry of that church, they want to feed into their temporal life how to have a better life now. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to be honest with you. That's why you see a lot of this mega stuff. And I don't even want to mention names, but they, they know people are living in the now. They don't live, not eternity. And so they feed ministry to them about how you can be more well and how you can make more money and how you can be happier and blah, blah, blah. You know, tell, tell Paul about that sitting in the jail. Oh, Paul, you just don't have the gospel, man. You, you, you'd be rich and wealthy and, and happy and you'd have a, a condo on the, on the beach down in Florida if you were serving God right. And that's the message the world wants to hear. And they'll come to church if, if you're feeding that flesh. Let's stand together. Thank you for being here this morning. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Pray for the service as we get into that. Tell you what. Good to know the Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Every time you walk by a casket, you're just looking at the body. That person's in eternity. Yeah. There's a man here in Norwood who died several years ago. I went to see him, talk to him about his soul. He was lost, openly admitted he was lost. He was dying, and, uh, and I went to see him. His wife would not let me see him. He, she said, my husband's just fine. She knew, you know, she presumed that I'd come talk to him about the Lord, which I did. <clears throat> Other preachers went by to see him, and uh, they wouldn't let any preachers talk to him. But when he died, they wanted to have a funeral. And I'm going to say to this man's credit, they had this preacher come preach his funeral and I wasn't even there and I heard about it he got up and said listen I'm not going to play around with this thing many people tried to reach this man for Jesus sake and he rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ and according to the word of God he is burning and screaming in hell while I'm preaching his funeral and I will forever respect that preacher because it was such an in your face deal that he's alright he don't need no preachers talking to him and uh, I tell you, if we ain't careful, we're glassing over eternity and, and not, not getting real about it. But if you're saved, you look forward to eternity. Amen. God don't lie to you. He gave you eternal life, life of Christ. Brother Avi, I say Avi. Ira. 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 Would you just miss us a prayer, please? Never will get your name right. Just get used to it. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for uh, your word that never changes. We just thank you for the truth that we've heard today. Please, uh, thank you for the wonderful reminders of where we're all headed, you, who know you, Lord. We so love you, Lord, and we just, we know we're unworthy, but we know that you're worthy, Lord. Yes. And we just thank you for purchasing our eternal salvation, yes. Lord. And we so love you, Lord, and we just ask that you help us all to grow more and strengthen more by through, through surrendering more and living for you more and more as we see that day approaching, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Bring your songbooks and let's sing and worship the Lord this morning. Let's worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Page number 68 this morning. Page number 68 in your songbooks today. Oh, 